What's cozy, everybody? Welcome back. Oh, Lord. What's cozy? Ooh, I don't like this angle. There we go. What's cozy, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I am Jai, and welcome with Tarot with Jai. Hello. Um, I I was going to be like, oh, I'm Tarot with Jai. I'm Jai. I'm an intuitive reader here on YouTube. Um, but um, welcome. Welcome back to welcome back to my next pick a card, or welcome if you're new, to a pick a card um, based on the messages from your inner child. So, why did I do this reading? Um, mainly because I, um, so, fun fact, I have, let me actually, let me actually pull it up. So, I have this spinner, um, cancel. So, I have this spinner that I literally spin, if you guys can see, that I literally spin, and once it stops, it picks my next pick of cards. And so, ooh, your next relationship. So, for my single. So I guess, you know what, since I did that, that'll be my next reading. Even though this reading is timeless, no matter when you are watching this, this message resonates. So yeah, fun fact, if you're watching this by this, around the time I'm uploading, that most likely will be my next pick a card. And I know that. So plus Buffy's coming. Oh, okay. Anyway, um, anyway. <laughs> so, um, yes. So if you like this content, if you like my videos, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you want to book a personal reading, if you like my reading style, if you like how I read, there is a link in the description box with um, my website and there are specific instructions on where you can purchase my readings. And uh, what was I going to say? Oh, if you want to follow my social medias, which is just Mr. with two R's underscore expressions, um, there's a link in the description box. If you want to follow my main channel, which has all my other stuff, like my music that I make, um, I am an artist. Um, it has that over there, which honestly, I just started. And um, yeah, I'm getting that in my podcast. I forgot about Hala Ajai. I need to get back to my Hala Ajai podcast, though, by the way. I need to get back to that. But anyway, um, yeah, I was going to say, if you like my readings tip, my tip jars, and the, but I'll just, uh, I ain't worried about that. I just want to get these messages out. So I'm going to put you, I'm going to take you straight to the pile so where you can pick your group. And we're going to just... Get started. Ooh, I just saw 222 two, two on my camera. So 222 two, two is definitely significant for all of us. So peace out. Love y'all. And I will see you later. Bye. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the pick a card. Put the pick a group portion of this reading. Again, this reading is messages from your inner child. And so as you can see, we have four groups here. First group is this um weird punk starfish i'm uh, not starfish this punk star group fish that's represented by group number one group number two you guys have the beautiful smiling flower i almost said dandelion but i don't think this is the dandelion group three you are represented by this red polka dotted mini bow which I'm, i don't think that's what it's called but it reminds me of Minnie mouse And pile number four, you're represented by this lollipop. Lollipop. Ooh, lolly, 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 lollipop. Lollipop. So, um, go ahead. You can pause this video, meditate, do whatever um, you do when it comes to pick card readings. And the timestamps will be linked in the description box below. Also, it will be... Um, the decks that I use are also going to be in the description box below on all my social medias. and But I'll explain that in the reading at the end. So, without further ado, let's get to what your inner child has to tell you. Hello, pile number one. If you have chosen this punk rock star, um, punk rock fish is what I'm going to call it. This is your reading on what, your, on what a message from your inner child is. So, I wanted to do something very interesting. And so what this reading is, I'm going to be using a specific inner child spread by Danny Mystic here on YouTube. The link to the video of her doing the spread is in the link in the description box. But I wanted to do this spread because it has so many great questions for your inner child. If you want to pause this and read what I have here, that is definitely, um, you could do that. <laughs> but 
this reading is going to be rel relatively quick. Um, I have, I'm going to put it actually in the reading. I have three oracle messages here that we will get to the end after we get done with the full spread here. But these are the cards we're going to do for the spread. We have one for each one. And so, actually, let's just put it over here. So if anybody, well, I know I can see it, but you may not be able to fully see it. So the first one is, how do um, you see yourself? Number two is, how does your inner child see you? <laughs> how can you be more open to receive, be receptive to what your inner child has to say? How can I, how can you support your inner child? And healing message from your inner child. Ooh, I love this energy. Making sure that this is... Okay. So now that we got here, um, I actually want to move this card over here. Just so, yeah, that makes it more beautiful for me. So you guys can actually see everything. So, so we would definitely pull the oracles at the end. But let's get to the reading itself. So number one, how do you see yourself? So with the Four of Wands here, I see a lot of comfort. You see yourself how you've been seeing yourself. The Four of Wands to me is also a comfort zone. Um, the things that we call that we feel comfortable in our environments. So I could definitely see yourself as very comfortable with who you are. Um, a lot of things with the Four of Wands, it's also um, you've reached an accomplishment so far. You're not at the end of the road yet. With the Four of Wands, you're at a point... You, it's, it's like, for example, this car, like Jafar here. To me, this energy is like Jafar when he finally got the lamp um, from the from Aladdin and he's finally wished to become sultan and a sorcerer. You have finally reached a goal of yours. And now you feel, honestly, some of you guys feel accomplished. accomplished. For some of you guys, some of you guys, you are definitely feeling like you need to accomplish something. You need to make sure that things are coming together. And you're feeling good. You're honestly feeling good about some things. And, <coughs> excuse me, some of you guys are definitely going to be trying to worry about your home. And it's okay to worry about your environment, but I also feel like that some of you guys are too focused on your environment, how to make it comfortable. Um, A message from <laughs> the message I'm hearing is that there's a need to be stepping outside your comfort zone. You need to discover your new comfort zone. And that's also what some of you guys, again, this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave the rest behind. Because some of you guys are discovering a new, um, what's the word? A new comfort zone? I just want to say that. Some of you guys are discovering that new comfort zone. Some of you guys could be moving as well. The Four of Wands is a new home. So you're caught, you definitely see yourself as someone who is in need of finding a new, a new space. I should say that. Um, you need to accomplish something and you have goals that you need to achieve. So maybe you're putting a lot of, um, a lot of stress on yourself and you are, I, there's another word I want to say, but I forgot the word. And I want to say like, you want to be an achiever. That's how you see yourself. You need to achieve to prove yourself. And so for number two, we have how does my inner how does my inner child see me? So how does your inner child see you? They see as the five of the five of swords. Now, the five of swords is a petty energy. It's a lack of information. How your inner child sees you as someone who is very that does that does not know all the details. <laughs> your inner child sees you as someone who does not see the full picture you're only seeing what you're allowing yourself to see which is so funny because lucifer is the five of swords and if you watch cinderella um lucifer is not a nice cat <laughs> lucifer i remember the scene i think it's at the beginning where cinderella was cleaning the floor and lucifer was um literally messing her up in the process um i call her that i call i call lucifer the um the familiar of Lady Tremaine, but Lucifer—that's a—it's a sneaky little, it's a sneaky little decisive little petty energy. A lot of this energy is rooted from I would do anything to accomplish what I need to do, even though it's more Seven of Swords to me. But it's more that you do not see everything that you're supposed to be seeing. You're only seeing what you're allowing yourself to see, and this could be a situation where you are only seeing the good when the bad is right in front of the good. 
You're trying to see through the bad when you have to face the bad in front of you, which explains why I guess I see why Lucifer is in the spotlight because now it's making you actually see it. You're actually seeing the root of the problem. You're actually seeing what's causing the problem to be so, um, so petty, so mean, so deceptive. Um, just, it's, it's the re it's, you're seeing a lot of the reasons, but a lot of you guys need to stop annoying it. And so what your inner child is doing is and what they how their inner child sees you as someone who's a bit naive. They see you as someone who is trying to avoid the bad so so you can have accomplished the good, which I understand. Focus on the positive, but sometimes we have to find that balance. We have to find that balance and go with the good. Because without the good, there cannot be bad. Without bad, there is no good. There is no light without dark. There is no dark without light. So you have to understand that balance and the um, polarity of it all. And so let's go to number three. How can you be more open and receptive to what your inner child has to say? We have true love here, which is the lovers. Hmm, that's so interesting. You have to choose the true love here. To get to the light, you have to go through the darkness. Because how I'm seeing this is that Prince Eric is going to be kissing Ariel. That's the true love. But we're still at the wedding scene where Ursula is now revealing her true form. And now she's going to be getting in the middle of this true love. So what's the honest thing is you have to choose to go through the darkness and not be so focused on the light until the darkness is defeated. Okay. And it's, it's, it's easier said than done. I understand that. I don't want to say, I don't want to be like, oh, it's so easy to do that. No. Well, pile one, how you can be more receptive is actually choosing to listen. Not just being like, oh, I get it. Okay, dust it off. No, you have to literally choose to listen. When they tell you to face it, when they tell you to go through it, go through it. It's okay to feel a way. It's okay to feel uncomfortable. That's the way of life. It's how things operate. It's how things function. And sometimes we can't even help that. So I do want to say that now is really time to make the choice because you're never going to learn unless you decide to choose. Sometimes we're forced to by the um, by spirit, universe, God, whoever you believe in, whoever your higher deity is. Sometimes they force us in a position, but sometimes they don't force us to do it. So right now, how can you be open and receptive is choose to be open. Finally, and it's funny because now I'm seeing this, like when you have your hold on this light, this positive situation, the good that is coming to you, sometimes the evil is going to come in and try and break you apart. But it's just going to be your choice to hold on to the light. But it's also going to be your choice to have to face this darkness because the darkness is not going to go anywhere unless you deal with it. So for power four is how can I support my inner child? So the magician card is here. Which I, I I call the musician I call the musician um a card of communication since musician is ruled by uh, Mercury. Um, how can you support your inner child? <laughs> Cause I got friends on the other side. That's <laughs> it's time to befriend your child again. Your inner child. Do what it's it's like. Do what made you feel younger. Connecting with your inner child. And, you know, when you need help, remember when Dr. Felucier, Felucier, I hope I'm not pronouncing that name right, I cannot pronounce his name for nothing. When he went, when he was in trouble trying to find Pris Naveen, um, he went to his, uh, his friends on the other side and they helped him once they asked. Yes, they came for the price, but he asked. There's the communication. It, it's time to do, it's, uh, maybe you need to ask your inner child. Literally communicate with your inner child. You could do this through dreams. You could do this through just a meditation, um, inner child meditation, etc. But I will have to say that this is you having to reconnect, okay? Having to reconnect with it, not being afraid to connect with it. Some of you guys could get into some tarot cards, like find a deck that's specifically speaking to your inner child. And now you're going to be con communicating with your inner child through tarot as well. Just because he does have his tarot cards. Which, if you guys know where I can get a deck of his, like, literal, literal, um, 
um, tarot cards anywhere, please put it in the description box below if they made it. If they have or somebody made it, let me know. That deck is interesting. And every time I watch the movie, I'm like, oh, yeah, I want it. And I see the representations and the meanings and the right away Smith inspired. But anyway, let's get to the last message. Position number five, healing message from your inner child. And it's so funny because we have temperance here. We have the card of balance, the card of integration, the card that is literally, it, once you pour into it, it will pour into you. And it's so funny because I just now noticed that their eyes, one is yellow and one is clear white. And I just, I love the equality and the balance here. I apologize for my furthest coming, my furthest. But yeah, that's so bad. But anyway, it's a balance. Healing message for your, for your inner child is to find the balance, the, um, the polarity. Remember when I said earlier that you have to find good between the balance between the good and evil, the darkness and the lights of situations? That's what you have to do. It's really about little balancing and integrating both because that's how life is. And sometimes I know we don't want to face the darkness 100% because we've always been in darkness. But it's so funny because when you reach the light, that is you overcoming the darkness. It may not feel like it, but that's a milestone itself, pile one. And your inner child is telling you that you have gone through a lot. <laughs> you are gone through a lot and all you can do is just ask for help and just choose to follow it. You have to go through the darkness to get to the light. That's why the, there's a light at the end of the tunnel is what I'm hearing. And I'm seeing it. You know, what's that song called? I got tunnel vision. I'm on it, but it's gonna don't win it. That's what I'm hearing. Tunnel vision. Is that Kodak Black? Pretty Whitey, I don't know why my, I don't know why y'all gonna try one of that song out. Um, but literally, that's what the temperance card is. It's time to find that balance. It's time to really integrate and find that equilibrium. I think that's the what the word equilibrium. And so that's that's the spread itself. That's the spread itself. I know I'm, that's relatively quick, but I just wanted I wanted these messages to be relatively quick as well. So. We're going to lastly get some last and bit of advice from your inner child using these three oracles. And yeah, that will wrap up your reading. Again, I want this reading to be fairly quick. So we have all the answers you need are coming. Yeah. Tower moments. Expect change, blessing in disguise, and sound healing. So some of you guys, your inner child is really telling you to go get that singing bowl. Again, meditation. Meditation that came out, number 45 here, if that resonates. The fact that sound healing came out. Remember when I said that meditation finds you answers? Some of you guys, your inner child is really telling you to go get that sound bowl. Connect with them during sounds. Connect them with them during meditations. Get those sound bowls that you've really been having in your cart for this minute. Really go to a yoga where they have sound bowl healing. Because I'm hearing meditation will bring answers. And the fact that we have the tower moment here, we have expect change. Again, I did say at the beginning that change, that you really, their energy right now, that you want change. But what how your inner child sees you is that you really don't understand the change. You don't really see the whole bigger picture that you need to see it. So pile one, there's your spirit. Yeah, I said, I almost said your spirit, baby. Oh, gosh. Um, your inner child is telling you that things are going to be happening. But they are the answers that you have been needing, the answers that you honestly have been seeking. Sometimes you need to ground yourself and reconnect. Maybe you guys need to start listening to sound while you sleep. There's always a YouTube live of sounds that need to be, um, that people post so you can sleep well. And so, pile one, this is just your need to connect, be patient, because things are going to be falling into place, whether they crumble around you or build up in front of you. There's something that's going to happen that you're really going to be like, why in the heck did this happen to me? But it's going to be a great evolution for you, Pile One. An excellent evolution for you. And it's what you need. It's not it maybe not exactly what you want, but it's what you need. It's what you need, child. You got to dig a little deeper. Find out who you are. You gotta dig a little deep. It really ain't that hard. Wow. Blue skies and sunshine guaranteed. 
Come on, come on. You gotta dig, dig. Hey, you gotta dig, dig. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna link that song in your pile just so. So you get some extra messages. But pile one, that was your reading for what messages your inner child has to tell you. If you like this, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you want to book a reading with me, um, there is the first link in the description box below. Just follow the instructions and that's the only way you can book with me. Um, two, if you want to follow my main channel or my social medias, which is just Mr. with two R's underscore expressions, they're all linked in the description box. And my podcast is down there. And Danny Mystic is um, her link, her video to this spread doing it herself is also in the description box below if you want to go watch her example. So that was your reading. I hope to see you guys in another reading. Peace out. Hello, hello, pile two. If you have chosen this smiling flower, this is a message from your inner child. So, I will be using Lisa Propez's inner child connection spread, which this spread will definitely be a five card spread on your inner child. Doing these issues, you could um, pause this reading. I mean, pause the video and read what I'm going to be going over. Or I will have I would link her video in the description box below. So you guys can go watch the video yourself. And so I want to just get into this reading. This reading should be relatively short, small, and simple. And then yeah. And so I have these three oracle messages that I pre-shuffled that we will be getting at the end of this reading when this is all, when part one is all said and done. Again, I apologize if you guys can hear the furnace. It is in the back and it's still winter time in the um, Midwest of the United States. So let's get these cards out. So the first card is the center, it's the core issue. The second card is what is blocked. Wow, pile two. <laughs> the third one is the fear. Um, the fourth one is what is wanted. And the fifth one is what is needed. Make sure everything is in frame. Make sure everything's in frame. Make sure my, you can see the Oracle cards too, just so I can be aesthetically pleasing. So I'll move this over a bit. Oh yeah, I put that one. Okay, let me just move this over a bit. And then I'm gonna move these over and that should make a whole lot more sense. Okay, which it does, thank goodness. So let's get to the core issue of this, which is the 10 of swords. This is, <laughs> oh my gosh. A lot of you guys, I'm, I'm getting automatically that you're, you're self-sabotaging. Um, you're self-sabotaging a lot when it comes to old patterns. This could be patterns from your childhood that you are, yet again facing or it could be also a brand new challenge that comes to your um that comes from rooted from childhood i want to say childhood trauma but i don't want to be that dark but it is definitely in that spectrum but i will say i'm, I'm gonna say childhood trauma the ten of swords is a card of you know it's a card of betrayal but in this sense with there being a core issue it's a card of self-sabotaging that you are refusing to see you are refusing to see a lot about I want, I want I don't a lot of endings and the thing is do you are and I have a feeling that you know what this what this situation is I don't know when I see a card like this when it comes to the swords and they all are stabbing in the one specific area this gives me the energy that you are literally knowing exactly the situation that needs to be dealt with that needs to be set aside that finally needs to be addressed you have literally prolonged this for as long as you can. And I can tell you right now, you are literally blocking a lot from you. You are blocking a lot of mental growth, emotional growth, possibly even physical growth. You are avoiding a lot. You are hurting yourself in this situation. <laughs> that's that's the core issue of what this is. You are blocking yourself. And of course, this could be this could be from childhood trauma where you had to literally stop yourself from feeling, stop yourself from thinking and just self-sabotaging yourself so you're not a burden. I understand that a lot. Believe me, I do. When you feel like your opinions or emotions doesn't matter because now it wor it's worrying about something else. Um, and it's so funny that literally I'm looking at this and this is really a, a, literally like a reading about air versus water and the air is literally winning the mental block is winning 
you have the cups over here and you have the air over here like literally this energy of the mental the mind blockage is here because what is being blocked is the two of cups the two of cups to me is a loving bond regardless if this is a, a romantic relationship a platonic relationship familiar relationship the, what's being blocked is creating that bonds with people and what needs to be addressed is you really what, what what bonds have really been affected by this? Why have you been not emotionally available for some people? And it's okay because this Ten of Swords tells me there's a lot of trauma from you. And I love how these two cups are literally blending the, the liquids that they have with each other. I love how they're blending, which tells me that you guys really need to, need, you guys are blocking love. <laughs> you guys are blocking love from you it's for your higher good love is such a great frequency it's one of the highest freaking sweet frequencies in the world and you seem to be blocking it but it's rooted from pain and hurt and things that you are not letting go of and the fear here is the six of swords the fear here is literally being left behind the six of swords is um of a movement card it's a movement card. You're so afraid. Ooh, is that really why? So some of you guys are afraid of moving on. Some of you guys are afraid of leaving things behind. But that's the way of life. And I get it. You don't want to express. Because you know if you say something. You know if you feel something. You're going to have to act on it. I just saw 555 five, five on my camera, by the way. That could be significant. Well, that is. Because that 555 five, five is an angel number about change. But anyway. Um... The Six of Swords talks about movement. You know, it talks about the internet as well, but I don't really see it in this case. The Six of Swords is really about you leaving what doesn't serve you behind and going towards something that does serve you, pile two. Excuse me, I got a cough. <coughs> and that's just, it's, it's what it is what it is. And I understand that it is hard to leave things behind because once you realize that some things haven't been able to mend some things aren't able to really go back to the way they were when you realize some things some bonds need to be broken off and some bonds that you are holding on to really need to be shattered and that's the fear leaving everything behind i mean because what you want is a bond that's big strong and covered with hair okay <laughs> the knight of cups but if it doesn't have to be a relationship, this is really about emotional maturing. Emotionally maturing. What you need to do is just much understand that your emotions are not a burden. They're actually very much assisting you. Because if once, because I always tell people, if you feel if your emotions are really like being affected by this relationship and it's draining you, it's not for you. It should be able to boost you up. It should be able to help you. It should be able to. Again, help you mature. The Knight of Cups is a, like to me is about maturing. You know, and if this is about love, some of you guys are really searching for that offer, searching for someone who's big, strong, and muscular. Okay, Gaston's energy, like <laughs> someone who is conceited. I see with the hunters thing in that. Someone who's a little conceited. Or this could be you yourself, someone who is very much conceited in themselves, finally, that loves themselves more than everybody else. And that could be what this Two of Cups is, the bond, the loving bond with yourself, putting someone else's needs before yours. Maybe that was a habit of yours because, again, you didn't want to be a burden is what I'm feeling like, Pile 2. You hid yourself, you hid your feelings because maybe you were one of the first two older siblings or whatever. It don't have to be. And you just, if you felt like you said something, it just made you feel more selfish, um, more cruel, more bitter, etc. But that's not what you really want. You do want to express yourself. You do want to fill yourself up with your own cup. You do want to find this emotional maturing energy here. Okay? But see what you need to do. <laughs> uh, the Two of Swords is also, to me, there's a need to cut something off. It's it's time to cut something off, pile two. And what you need to cut off 
is what you've been holding on to. Like I said, there's this rope that you're literally tugging, warring like this, uh, struggling. But all you need to do is like literally take those two swords and go, shh, and let that, let that situation, let that person fall flat on their butt and leave it alone. Let that, let that energy of them just be gone. It's time to move on. The fear is what she, the fear is what you need to face and what you need to heal, to connect. Your inner child is telling you that now this time is really, it's really over. <laughs> you can't do nothing else about it. You can't heal the situation more. You can't mend the situation more. Because if you was able to mend it, you would have been able to mend it a long time ago. Now it's just becoming a burden on yourself. Now your mind keeps thinking about this person while your emotions are being put on the back burner. And every time your emotions come in, you block it out saying, no, I'm over. No, no, no. This is not what. No, no, no. I'm thinking. No, no, no. I have to think with my head. I don't need to fill in my heart. My heart is wrong. That's the conditioning. That means you were conditioned as a child to feel that way, to not respect your emotions. I don't see that with the Knight of Cups. That's what you want. You want to respect your emotions and respect how you feel. And you already feel like this situation isn't for you, but your mind is telling you another thing. So now, honestly, without even thinking, it's time to just really cut off this situation. Really need to cut off this um, burden. And I was going to say something too, but because the Two of Swords is my bisexuality card, but this is the inner child reading, so I don't really want to say, really want to lead towards the sexuality spectrum. Of that, but of course, you could have been really doubting yourself as being a bisexual. You could, don't have to, or really liking the same sex, but it doesn't have to again. I just wanted to say that because the Two of Swords is my bisexuality card. I'm sorry, Pile Two, there was some camera malfunction. So, for the last messages, we're going to get these last three oracle messages. We're going to go as deep as possible as we can and then give you the message as you can. So, automatically, we have Trust the Universe, the first quarter moon in Aquarius. And I want to say, is that the that the crown chakra right there? I believe that's look like the crown chakra. Alone time, self-care, enjoy your peace, recharge. I love that for you guys. And finally, we have chanting. Oh, I love this. This is so self-explanatory, guys. You need to do some self-care and realize your wants and realize your needs, okay? We already went over some what you wanted and what is needed, what is wanted and what is needed. But also with those also being said, you also are going to be needing to really address yourself. What other wants and needs you need and need and want. <laughs> with Trust the Universe here, all you got to do is just go with the flow. Let things happen the way they're supposed to happen. Don't try to over control things. I see you guys are reaching for a higher. It looks like you guys are reaching for something very much higher. I feel like that's if that's the, I feel like that's the crown chakra. Honestly, in all my opinion, I feel like that's the crown chakra, and you're reaching towards that crown, trusting your higher self, trusting your intuition, third eye and crown chakra as well, and that upper channel and chakra. And I can tell you that really, some of you guys are going to have to do be doing some self care. It's time to get away from some people, and really address everything. It says self care. Enjoy your peace. Recharge. It's sometimes some of you guys need to go on vacation. Some of you guys need to get a massage. Some of you guys need to go to yoga. The fact that we have chanting here in these yoga mats. Some of you guys need to start really getting into, you guys could be a yoga instructor, don't have to be, but you guys really need to center yourself, vocalize um, with the chanting. There is a lot of throat chakra energy there and really appreciate yourself. Really sit down with yourself. Um, some of you guys, this may be the first time that you guys are hearing a lot of this information in this reading. And right now, with everything happening, you're realizing some things. And it's a great thing. <laughs> I'm telling you that right now. It's, it's a great feeling I'm feeling. So I, I do want to say that you guys need to really protect your energy now. Move on from situations that don't serve you. I know it's scary to leave things behind because you feel like you still need them. I know a lot of situations, based on this reading, you do not need no more pile two. Right now, it's just really an anchor that's holding you back from, from surfing, from a smooth sail. Some of you guys think you, can, you have to do this journey with other people. I'm saying 
You can do this journey alone. All you got to do is just trust, have faith that everything is going to be okay. And everything is going to happen the way that it's supposed to happen. So, Pile 2, if you enjoyed this reading, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you um, if you want to book a personal reading, the only way you can book a personal reading is through my website in the first link in the description box. If you want to follow my main channel, that is also my link in the description box. It's just plain old Jair. And if you want to follow my social media, it's link in the description box. It's just Mr. with two R's underscore expressions and everything else is down there. So... Um, if you like this reading and you want to leave a tip, my tip chart is below. It'll be greatly appreciated. 100% optional. And so with that being said, I will see you guys in your next reading. Whenever that is, whenever I post. So peace out, pile two. Hello, pile three. So if you guys chose this mini mouse bow, this cute little bow here, this is your reading on inner child messages for you so i don't want to hold you guys up this message should be relatively quick so we have three oracle messages that we will get to that at the end of the reading just for last bit of advice etc so let's just get into the spread this is the spread we're using by danny mystic if you want to look at her video there is an um a link in the description box below where you can go watch her um video of it but here's the um reading you can pause it you can copy it down if you would like to do this on your own so Let's get into this. So we have the five cards for each spot. So spot number one, spot number two, spot number three, spot number four, spot number five. Let me make sure. Oh, this is at a crooked angle. This is not cute. I hate when it's not centered. Okay, that's better. So the first spot we have here is how do you see yourself? So with the Ten of Wands here, I see it as a little bit of jealous. You guys could be jealous of a lot of situations. Could be jealous of situations that are around you. Could be jealous of situations that work. So of relationships. Especially with the evil queen and her ugly hag. You guys may feel ugly by, based on your actions. You may feel ugly based on how you are feeling. Especially with the Ten of Wands. You are putting burdens on yourself that you have really caused. This is really burdens that you have accepted burdens that you are willing to once you realize they are not good for you you're going to be willing to drop them that's really what i'm seeing here and the ten of wands here also tells me the story of snow white and how the um the evil witch was going to poison snow white and out of why out of her jealousy of snow white's beauty so you guys are really seeing yourself as someone that you are really not. <laughs> Some of you guys may think that you are not attractive. I'm here to tell you that you are. <laughs> Some of you guys may think you're not worthy enough. Let me tell you that you are. Some people that you're not successful enough. Let me tell you, you are. <laughs> you have to tell yourself. You have to be your own best friend. Okay? That's really what this is saying. I just caught 222 on my camera. But with this being said here, like you really have to see yourself in a different perspective now because you're seeing yourself in such a negative, ugly way. Now, with the four of cups being how your inner child sees you, I can tell you right now, they're tired of your BS. <laughs> your, inner child, your inner child is really, really tired of your BS. They're really, they're really like with the four of cups, they're really like, mm -hmm. OK, I don't I don't I don't care. <laughs> I don't believe it. I'm so detached from it. I don't see the BS that you're giving yourself. This is not what we're supposed to do. I don't, I don't, eh, nope, eh, wrong, try again. <laughs> that is basically what I'm seeing. Like, literally, you need to try again. Because your inner child is seeing something that you are not seeing. And, of course, that is very much normal. Very much normal. But with the Four of Cups here, I can tell you right now, your inner child is looking like this is what you went to. This is really what you went to. Boring. You chose the easy way out. Ooh, your inner child messy. Your inner child is really messy. Your inner child sees a lot. <laughs> um, that innocence, that playfulness, the beauty within your imperfections as well. So I do have to say your inner child is really telling you that you need to notice what they are noticing. Tapping into that energy is going to be very helpful, going to be very useful for your growth. Because right now, I really don't... <clears throat> yeah, again, that's really your inner child is not having it. So, 
Um, how can you be more open and receptive to what your inner child has to say? Sometimes with the two of wands here, you're going to have to clash with your inner child. And I feel like, because the two of wands to me is a conflict card. And the way this two of wands is seeing, it is, it very much is conflict here. Um, you guys are definitely going to have to clash. You guys are definitely going to have to, um, bring out each other's points of views. Um, and it's a good versus evil battle. That's the thing. It's such a good versus evil battle. It's your insecurities, your negativity versus what your inner child is trying to show you, the positives, the positivities of everything. Okay? Be prepared. I don't know why be prepared is coming up. <laughs> I don't know why be prepared wants to come up now. Because with the two of wands... There's going to be a lot of clashing with what you think it is, what your inner child is, what you find is innocent, what you find is playful, what you're seeing and what you're not seeing. Because I see you, you know, what I'm seeing right now is like literally a person with two different eye color. Like one eye color is like brown, the other one is blue. And like the blue is seeing a lot of the good, the innocence, the playfulness. And the brown is seeing the negatives, the only things that you are willing to force yourself to see with the things that you believe to see. And the points of views is like really like doing this, and it's like, shh, shh. Ooh, look, I'm clashing with the, look, I'm clashing with the um the camera, so shh, shh. like it keeps clashing, and it's like, but your points of views are clashing. Like one time, like one second, you are looking at everything in such a love and light, um, everything's always gonna work out for me, and the next thing you know, you're looking at it in such a negative force, you're looking at it in such a negative way, you're looking at it so like it's not gonna happen for me. And that's really how you're going to be open and receptive because now you're really going to have to clash and somebody's points of view is going to get across. And it seems like your inner child's point of view, how they look at you, how they see you is going to get through and now you're really going to see it. Okay. And with the card number four, which is how can I support my inner child? It's time to be wild and free. <laughs> it's time to be in that kid energy. We have the Knight of Wands, which is a lot of aggression, but with Madam Mim here, Madam Mim is a little bit psycho. <laughs> As you can see in this image, she's a little psycho. She's a little psychopath. So you guys have to have a lot. It's time to get some energy out. Some of you guys could need to go to the gym. Some guys need to put your um, drive in some a passion project. Some of you guys really need to start channeling your energy into something productive instead of something that's unproductive. I hope that's a word, unproductive or not productive. But it, you really got to force that. And it's, it's going to really put you into a place that makes you back to that child feeling, back to that childlike behavior. Well, yeah, back to that childlike thought process. Maybe you need to color with your, with your less dominant hand. I heard that one was a way to channel your inner child, like not trying to get into the perfectionism of it. Some of you guys could be perfectionists and you guys really need to <laughs> calm down and stop the perfectionism. Because that's really tarnishing and making you really be in that adult place instead of that happy fun time of playfulness, of joy, satisfaction, just accepting joy. Because joy and happiness is, our, our, is literally the highest frequency there is. And once you're at those highest frequencies, you bring so much happiness. You have the magic, <laughs> pile three. You literally have the magic. I got the magic in me. I got the magic in me. And why that song wanted to come up? So for the fifth card here, we have a healing message from your inner child. And literally, your inner child is literally offering you a lot of healing energy, a lot of blessings, a lot of a new emotional fulfillment is what I'm feeling. A new opportunity for emotions to flourish. This could be with the person, but it doesn't have to be. This It definitely seems like the love for yourself. It seems like you're going to be learning how to fill your own cup with your own love. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? I find that very peaceful. I find that very relaxing once you can find that, that love within you. Sometimes you have to force yourself to be in that position to love yourself. Don't force yourself to love yourself because loving yourself should be easy. You should train yourself. You should be patient with yourself when it comes to loving yourself. But you should charge for an opportunity where it will cause for you to be patient, to find love within your comfort, to find love within yourself. And you're no longer clashing with views. Because I'm feeling with the two of wands, you're going to be clashing with yourself and trying to figure out what is the right thing to do and what's the wrong thing not to do. You know, 
I have a feeling that it's going to drive you crazy. <laughs> with Madam Mim in the center, I see you guys are going to be driving crazy and doing it with a smile. That's definitely what I'm seeing. You guys are going to definitely be doing this with a smile. Um, Even though, you know, I heard, like, I'm hearing the saying, laugh to keep from crying. It's going to, with the, especially with the Ten of Wands here. And I just realized that we have fire and water here. Two waters and three fires here. A lot of action driven, a lot of passion, a lot of drive. And then we have emotions. The way you feel. And the way that the fire is overcoming the water, it seems like a lot of passion and drive is going to lead to this emotion. But right now, you really, your emotions don't seem to be the biggest priority, even though they're there. We don't have any pentacles. We don't have any um, swords or major arcanas. So it's mainly going to be after doing with balancing your passions and your emotions and actually integrating them into one. Making sure that you are balanced within both and not one overriding the other. Because doing that will drive you crazy. <laughs> doing that will make you confused, Pile 3. And with the Ace of Cups being that healing message, it tells me that you have, you're, you're about to be presented or you are presented to an opportunity, a blessing of emotions that you can tap into. Okay, Pile 3, that is definitely what I'm seeing from your inner child. Now, now that we're here, let's get some, let's get some Oracle messages. Because I think that's all that I wanted to say. So the first card we have here is time to release negativity. Uh, I love the synchronicity of that one. Let it flow. Creativity, great ideas, inspirations. That is... And then sync with the moon. So some of you guys, to my um, more feminine figures who have menstrual cycles, menstrual cycles, please just, um, I do want to say, keep in, keep in tune when it comes to your um, cycles, make sure you write them down. If they have been off, make sure you write them down. Um, maybe it's just random. Maybe it's for coincidence. Maybe it's not coincidence because I don't, really don't believe in coincidences. Things happen for a reason. Um, with release negativity, again, the way you see yourself and the way your inner child sees yourself is going to clash. But I'm seeing that the inner child is going to shine the most because they're real. They're making you realize a lot of the things that didn't work out for you. So full moon and Scorpio. So. I was going to say maybe the full moon of Scorpio could have been significant, but I don't think, I don't, I don't know when the last time we had a full moon of Scorpio. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really time to release. It's time to let it flow. We have creativity. We have great ideas and inspiration. The Ace of Cups, the Knight of Wands, charging for it. Finally seeing what's in front of you. Somebody, so again, a project, a passion project. I did mention that earlier. And it's it's really time to point that energy, point all this negative energy that you had, all this pent up energy. It's time to charge it somewhere. It's time to really put it towards a greater good for your own health. <laughs> it's going to help you because once you release it, some of you guys could be releasing this negativity through um, artistic artistic ways, such as drawing, um, creating music, um, collage work, um, a poetry. Of anything creative that you've been having, like, need to release. Just let it flow. Sync with the moon can also be tapping into your emotions that you've been not having to um, tap into in a while. Those childlike emotions, the emotions that really made you feel and really made you to express yourself. There's nothing wrong with expressing yourself, Pile 3, but express yourself in a way that it can help you unburden a lot of feelings, thoughts, and a lot, a lot of, a, you know, I can't get crazy. Hey, I think you're crazy. Probably. That's period. So, um, pile three is this is really, your inner child is really telling you to release and see what they've been trying to show you for the longest. Feel your way through. Drive your way through. Use your passions to drive and feel your way through. Okay, so pile three, that was your reading on a message from your inner child. So if you enjoyed that, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you want to book your own personal reading, the first link in my description box, and there are specific instructions to follow to book a reading. If you want to follow my social medias, which is just two R's, Mr. Uh, Mr. with two R's underscore expressions, link in the description box below.
If you want to follow my main channel, which has my music, my vlogs, and my podcast, please, there is a description, the link in the description box below. If you like this reading and you want a tip, my tip jar is below. It'd be greatly appreciated. It is 100% optional. Having your energy here is definitely a blessing. And I will see you guys in my next reading. Peace out. Hello, hello, pile four. Last but not least, if you chose this lollipop, oh, lolly, 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 lollipop. Oh, lolly, lolly, lolly. This is the reading on messages from your inner child. So, I, I, I think I forgot to say this for everything else, but I'm just going to say this right now. This is a general reading. So, take what resonates and leave the rest behind. So, for these three cards, these are the oracle messages that we'll be getting at the end a lot. Like, mainly your advice. And we'll be getting those at the end. And so, let's get into the reading. We will be using Lisa Pepez's Inner Child Connection Spread. There is a link in the description box below where she is using this spread. You can pause it, screenshot it, and um, use it for yourself if you're a reader yourself. But there's the spread we're going to be using. And let's get into this. So, the first card we have is um, the core issue. We have what is blocked. We have the fear. We have what is wanted. And for number two, two cards fell out. So the first card is the six. What's needed is the six of wands and the seven of wands. Interesting. Those two fell out together. So, I, you know, I just said, let me just take them. Um... Let me figure these out. Let me pull these cards here. All right, so let's get to the core issue, which is this three of coins. So this, honestly, some of you guys could be dealing with a lot of career issues, um, working with select people. But with the three of coins being the heart of the issue, this does have to do with how you are, I want to say how you interact with people. The Three of Coins to me is also a career card. So this really like this really has to do with your career and how you interact with people in your career field, how you are trying to I'm hearing network when it comes to networking in your career. I'm definitely seeing that. And it, you may have a little bit of trouble connecting with people. Okay? There could be two other people, um, friendships, maybe relationships that you need to mend here. But I'm having like the core issue is really how you are able to connect with other humans, connect with other beings. How are you, um, what's the word I want to use? How are you communicating? How are you able to bring this um, earthly realm? Because the coins is a card of the earth. So some of you, uh, is, an earth, is an earth physical card. So some of you guys are trying to, I feel like the, it's, it's, a, it's a balance game. Some of you guys are trying to balance awareness when it comes to career and your friendships or career and family, that may be the issue here. That may be what's causing this turmoil of your priorities. Because with the three of coins, it gives me like three issues. Like one, you're trying to balance career, you're trying to balance yourself, and you're trying to balance the people around you that you love. And that's really what the three is to me, what this energy for the three is for me. Now, what is blocked is the four of swords. The four of swords is the block. What is be what is blocked in the situation? What's blocked is actually you having the time, you having the energy, you having the um alone time. You know, it's like alone time here. Four of swords is that rest, is that rejuvenation card. It's gathering yourself together. That's being blocked. You are really being occupied. <laughs> you are really being distracted from this. Okay, you are really being distracted and really shut out from what needs to happen. Okay, I don't like how, I don't think this is even, I don't think this is even just yet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. So sorry. I think that's correct. I hope, I hope that makes sense. I hope this, this doesn't bother anybody because I am a little bit wonkulous with this. But back to the Four of Swords energy. It seems like you don't have enough time to just sit and think. That's better. It seems like you guys don't have enough time to sit and think. Four of Swords. It's, it's, it seems like you're so busy with work. You're so working. You're so working. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to get this. You have to schedule this. You have to have a meeting there. You have to have this. You have to move the kids there. You have this, this, that, that, that. You have so much on your plate. You don't have enough time to really sit down and collect. 
you don't have enough time to really be like, okay, this is not going to work for me. Okay, I'm going to need to hire a babysitter. You don't have enough time to really even, I feel like I heard you don't have enough time to eat. Lord have mercy. Um, you need to eat powerful. You need to worry. You need to make sure that your priorities of yourself is correct because um, it's taken care of. Because once the interruption of your peace, the interruption of your um, of your priorities is gone, then you start losing yourself. And I'm noticing we have no cups here. <laughs> we have no cups here. So th the balance here is that really your emotional state is not really being identified. As much as we have three swords here, two wands and one thing, your mind is really going all over the place. Your mind is really, I want, it's not, it's it's taking over. You're really possibly overthinking, especially with the blocked card here with four swords. You could be overthinking a lot and not collecting your thoughts. And, and that's really a core issue. You have so much on your plate is that you don't have enough time to really just sit down, think about the day, really reflect. Your mind is just moving. Your day is just moving. You are constantly on the move. And for some of you, again, with the three of coins, it could be have to do with work. So I can tell you the fear, number three, the fear is the ace of swords. Jesus, I couldn't get it out of my hand. The fear here is the fact that I was just fumbling this card. It tells me that a lot of you guys are fearing the fumbling. <laughs> a good, this is, the Ace of Swords is an opportunity. Some of you guys are very fearful about fumbling and a great opportunity coming your way. Fumbling a new beginning. Uh, some of you guys fear that you are going to regret a lot of the decisions you are making now. Um, a lot of you guys probably are thinking this right now. Probably you guys are like, oh, I wish I didn't commit to this. I wish I didn't commit to that. Why did I agree to do this? Why did I agree to do that? I have to do this because I have to make this. I have to pay this. I have to pay. It's, it's like you have so many things that you, in your mind, think that you have to do when all you really had to do was say no. All you really had to do was say, I'm busy, even though you could have possibly been not. Your inner child is really telling you that there is a need to really say no. There's a need to really not be the one to always say yes and the one to cross off, be the one with the whole list and then be crossing off things once you're done. You're not grocery shopping here. You're literally wasting energy on things that someone else was either too lazy to do or someone used you because they knew you could say you couldn't say no. Pile four, you are really needing to say no here. So I do have to say, so the four of the four, the fourth position is what is wanted. And you have the seven of swords. Seven of swords to me is victory. Seven of swords to me is victory of all costs. That's what it is to me. With the seven of swords here, especially with Lady Tremaine and the glass slipper, this is really what you need. What you want to do is things being taken from you. <laughs> this list here is really getting to me. She has the list. You are trying to make sure that things are crossed off your list and stay crossed off your list. You do not want no extra priority. You do not want no extra things. You want to do like you have a daily list and you want to cross off things off that list and then be done with your day. You do not want new things to be added to this list. You want your responsibility to be dumbed down. I don't want to say dumbed down. That's not the word. You want your opportunity to be um, to what you think, to what you have agreed to and not what have others have put on you. Um, again, back to the work analogy. Again, you probably are mo the one of the most reliable people, if not the most reliable person, person uh, Pile 4. And now what, what Spirit is saying is that there really needs to be, what you want is for you to really be set. And then once that thing is done, it's done. You are done for the day. You can finally relax. You can finally just sit down with yourself and think about your day. Talk about your day with your person, your mother, your father, um, your siblings, your husband, wife, just talk to someone about the day, how it was exhausting instead of just constantly being on the move. And next thing you know, you're home and your spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend, everybody is asleep and you're just now getting home. And it's just like you miss out on quality time. So the fifth position with these two cards is what is needed? Six of wands and the seven of wands. I can tell you right now, the Six of Wands to me is an ego card. It's a recognition card. It's a boost of ego. 
The Seven of Wands is the underdog. It's proving yourself. What is needed is realizing when you need to prove yourself and when you need to really <laughs> need to evaluate when it's really time to feel like you need recognition. Because this card, what you need to do is really use that discernment, use that intuition, use that heart, use your, I mean, you already use your head. But with the recognition and proving yourself, you really need to know when and when not to feel like you need the recognition and want to be wanted. Some of you guys could be the underdog in the situation. I just saw 1010 on my camera. So if some of you guys feel like you may be the underdog in the situation. You need to constantly prove yourself. That's why you honestly keep adding on responsibility. There's no need. You need to realize that the recognition to you doesn't always have, doesn't always involve you proving yourself, doing the most, doing the um so many things. So that you wear yourself out, proving that you're so dedicated. All you got to do is ex accept the recognition of the responsibility you put on yourself. If that's what you're going to do today, your to-do list, then yes, take the responsibility for that. Don't try to gain extra recognition for going over and beyond. You are going to wear yourselves out. And a lot of you guys, that path is very clear. Some of you guys are trying to get on the road. I'm seeing this evil queen with the path. like She knows where she needs to go. She knows where she wants to go to fulfill her mission, to try to prove that she is the fairest in the land. Sometimes you need to look at that path and say, is it worth it? Is it really worth it? Okay? Is it really worth the travel? Is it really worth all this extra effort just to get the same recognition as everyone else? Powerful. That's really what you need to do is decide whether you are willing. You have to really decide how much is the recognition. Are you getting a raise from doing all this? Or are you just going to get a pat on the back, a good job? You really have to know the reward. You really have to know, is it really worth it? Is it really worth your mental health? Is it really worth your sanity? Is it really worth your physical health? To put all this passion, this drive, and this energy into something that you're only going to get the bare minimum back. That's the message that your inner child wants you to know. It's really about really where you're going to put your energy into and realize the reward after. Realizing the reward before you even do it. Is it going to be worth your time and effort? Or is it just going to be extra work to receive the same thing? You deserve to put in the work and get the same reward times two back just for putting extra effort in. Do not, um, do not, um, what's the, what's the saying? Don't dumb yourself down. No, that's not the saying. Um, oh, um, work for what you're worth. Work for what you are worth. Earn what you are worth. That's really what I'm feeling. So let's pull these two, three Oracle cards to get your last bit of messages. Find balance. The full moon in Libra. That makes so much sense. Love the synchronicity. Step out of your comfort zone. And finally, we have spend time with animals. So some of you guys have fur babies. Some of you guys just really need to spend time with them, sit around, pet them. Even if it's for like two seconds before you have to go out the house, pay them attention. Get you a pet if you don't have a bait. If you don't have a pet, go get you one. Figure out what you want, what you're allergic to before then. Um, step outside your comfort zone tells me maybe it's time to move on from this job that you have been really underappreciated. OK, find a job, find something, something that you haven't, something that you're not used to doing. Maybe you're so used to doing over and beyond. Now it's time for really you to do the bare minimum, not the bare minimum. Do what you are supposed to do and not overachieve. I feel like you will get more recognition from that. I feel like you'll have more time on your hands. I feel like you'll have more energy throughout the day to spend time with your kids, your husband, your wives, your families, your friends, etc., Step outside your comfort zone. Do the work that you're supposed to. Don't not do overtime all the time. Go out with your friends here and there. Find the balance between work, your home life, your friend's life, your career, etc. Don't try to overdo everything. Yes, I understand at the time, even though this reading is a timeless reading and how United States, if you're in the United States, is all the prices are increasing. I get that. But it's time to really balance 
your career, with play, with your relaxation. Some of you guys really need to start doing more meditation. Spend time with your pets. Spend time with animals. Spend time with your pets. Spend time out with nature as well, even though there already is a card in this deck for that. So, pile four, your inner child is just saying that it's time to really balance out your life again. You need to have fun like you used to. You need to stop overworking yourself because someone else is too lazy to do it. You need to do something that you're not used to doing. So, Pile 4, that was your reading, and I, I enjoyed doing this reading for you. If you enjoyed this reading, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you want to book your own personal reading, there is a link in the description box, the first link, actually. Um, if you want to follow my main channel, there is the first link there. If you want to follow my social medias, which is just Mr. with two R's underscore expressions, that is in the description box as well. There are links down there. If you like this reading and you want to tip, there is a tip giant below. It is greatly appreciated. It is 100% optional. I am just grateful that you came and watched this reading. And I will see you guys in your next pick a card. Bye.